Brazil, officially the Federative Republic of Brazil, is the largest country in both South America and Latin America. All the countries of the European Union could fit twice into the country. At 3.3 million square miles and with over 214 million people, there is a lot happening here. This colossal and complex city was created by the collective will of the ant colony. More than you think, from mysterious creatures to natural wonders to spectacular science and back again, you're not going to believe what you're about to see. 15 Mysterious Things Discovered in Brazil Part 2 Paleo Burrows in Brazil, deep in the Amazon, researchers found an enormous complex of strange caverns. In fact, it stretches more than 2,000 feet into the ground, with the roof standing six feet from the floor. And it isn't just the size of the caves that's strange. Their composition is nothing like that of other caverns which have been discovered in the region. The floors are smooth, while the tunnels are round. Then there are the marks on the walls. These marks, in fact, gave the researchers their first clue as to what had created the mammoth underground structures. Gouged into the walls of the incredible caves are deep gashes, and closer examination showed that they could have only been made by the claws of a now extinct giant animal. They're called paleo burrows, underground shelters excavated by extinct giant mammals, such as ground sloths that live in the prehistoric era. After the extinction of these giant animals about 10,000 years ago, some paleo burrows were reused by indigenous human populations as temporary shelters as well for ritual purposes. In the interior of some paleo burrows, researchers even discovered stone tools, ceramic artifacts, human burials, and inscriptions engraved on the walls. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. What is this hideous creature found in Brazil? Good question. Apparently, there's a cartfish that had human-like facial features. Eyes, nose, and a mouth was first discovered by a tourist who had shared the strange image. With an unusual face like humans and a downright creepy one at that, the fish spotted swimming in a lake in Brazil stunned the internet. But is this the face of a fish with metal-looking spikes for teeth? We're not so convinced. It looks a little too human with equal parts nightmare thrown in, if you ask us. Maybe you have some ideas. Humans are often considered the pinnacle of evolution, but some animals look closer to us than we might imagine. Animals with similar to human faces are chimpanzees, bonobos, orangutan, gorillas, sheep, cattle even sometimes. But whatever this thing is, it's none of those things. What do you have to say? Leave a comment with the hashtag missing topic. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Fish skin bandages. Animal skin has long been used in the treatment of burns in some countries, but Brazil lacks the human skin, pig skin, and artificial alternatives that are widely available in the United States. So likely, burn patients here look as if they've emerged from the waves. They're covered in a fish skin, specifically strips of sterilized tilapia. Doctors here are testing the skin of the popular fish as a bandage for second and third degree burns. Enter the humble tilapia, a fish that's widely farmed in Brazil and whose skin, until now, was considered useless. Unlike the gauze bandages, the sterilized tilapia skin goes on and stays on. Researchers got a great surprise when they saw that the amount of collagen proteins, which are a very important thing for scarring, exist in large quantities of tilapia skin even more than in human skin and even some others. In patients with superficial second-degree burns, the doctors apply the fish skin and leave it in until the patient scars naturally. For deep second-degree burns, the tilapia bandages must be changed a few times over several weeks of treatment, but still far less often than other methods. The tilapia treatment also cuts down healing time and reduces the use of pain medication. If clinical trials show continued success, Doctors hope to make it available everywhere. <laughs> Feeling crabby? This crustacean was filmed wielding a knife in its claw in what's believed to be a restaurant in Brazil, backing away from people off camera and waving the weapon. Could this be the most deadly crab in the world, making a desperate break for freedom to avoid certain doom? Looks that way to us. 
Now the hilarious clip is causing a storm on the internet with viewers suggesting the sea creature has armed itself to fight off hungry seagulls. Perhaps others have quipped the crab is merely protecting itself from the dangers of hungry diners craving seafood. Many compared the video to characters in Hollywood action and crime films, joking that the crab has lost control and it's a loose cannon and claiming it must be threatening fishermen. It appears to be an Atlantic ghost crab, native to beaches in southern Brazil. Due to its stalked eyes, which give it a 360-degree vision, the knife skills, however, researchers haven't seen before. The crabs are primarily nocturnal and not only stay in their beach burrows when the sun is high, but plug up the openings to them after retiring for the day. A slight wind drifts the fine sand enough to obliterate all traces of the crabs from the beach on which there could be thousands. But only this one has a weapon besides its pincher claws. <laughs> Monster Anaconda Is this a new world record for the world's biggest anaconda? Looks that way to us. Brazil is known for its big snakes. Check out this giant anaconda seen in the Amazon jungle. The Guinness World Record for the longest snake in captivity is currently held by a snake in Kansas City, United States, which measures 25 feet 2 inches long. A gigantic 33-foot-long anaconda was found by terrified builders on a construction site in Brazil, and this one lived in the wild. The huge reptile, which weighed in at a whopping 882 pounds, was discovered by the workers after they carried out a controlled explosion in the cave of Automira. So it's possible a snake even bigger than that could be living in Brazil right now. Whether they make an appearance on the silver screen or on the news, anacondas are famously scary reptiles. They're excessively long, thick snakes with eyes situated on the top of their head to help them scope out prey. They find comfort in trees, along rivers or ponds, taking advantage of their agile swimming abilities. Anacondas usually silently wait for their prey submerged in the water without being detected. It's hard not to notice a snake this big. Would you be able to keep calm if this was swimming by your boat? <laughs> Puma in the office While there may be a growing trend for pet-friendly workspaces, finding a puma under your desk will probably not promote the stress-free, moral-boosting atmosphere it's supposed to. Staff at a factory in a small town near Brazil's biggest city, Sao Paulo, discovered a dark brown puma curled up on the office floor. They thought it's best to call in the local animal rescue to sort this big kitten out safely. In a video, it can be heard growling and roaring at the emergency services. Pumas are members of the cat or feline family. Their mammals, meaning they have fur or hair, are warm-blooded and give birth to live babies. They're pretty large, but they're still in the small cat category. Pumas can be as long as eight feet, from nose to tail. That's longer than a tall adult. They can weigh between 75 to 160 pounds, which is about as much as a small adult human. Pumas are really good hunters too, because they can be sneaky and catch their prey off guard. As for this puma, conservationists believe the cat came out of its habitat to take shelter in the office because of the almost constant wildfires in the region. After being captured, the puma was taken to a non-governmental organization specializing in wild animal rescues. <laughs> Glowing Termites In the natural world, indescribable spectacles of glowing beauty produced by living beings is a thing. One of the most astonishing is the bioluminescent termite nest found in central Brazil. The phenomenon of the bioluminescent termite nest is very impressive. It's the result of the luminescent activity of beetle larvae, which are found in old nests of termites. These larvae excavate an intricate network of tunnels in the outer layers of the mounds leading outside from where they stick out their head and their green, shining, luminous prothorax to attract and catch flying prey, especially termites and ants. The termites here are famous for building sprawling nests, tall towers of cement-like earth. Not only do they provide a home for up to several million termites, but they're also used as nesting sites, home to hundreds of these glowing beetle larvae. Known as the headlight beetle, it's bioluminescent as an adult, but it's the larvae that truly shine. Adult beetles lay their eggs in the sides of termite mounds. When the young hatch, they glow with a green light bright enough to read by. The young are carnivorous, and their lights are a lure. Unsuspecting insects will make their way towards the prey, lights only to be seized for a meal by the voracious larvae. Thousands of turtles Talk about a turtle tsunami, 
tens of thousands of giant South American river turtle hatchlings emerged from a sandy beach in a protected area along the Purus River, a tributary of the Amazon River in Brazil. The giant South American river turtle is the largest freshwater turtle in Latin America, reaching lengths of three and a half feet and weighing up to 200 pounds. The turtles play an important ecological role by dispersing seeds that eventually help regenerate vegetation along river corridors. For the giant South American river turtle, birth is an explosion of life, but also it's the most fragile phase. In some areas, hatchlings use mass birth to increase their survival. The synchronization of birth allows them to travel together to the river to start their new journey. The baby turtle emergence occurred over several days. Approximately 71,000 hatchlings emerged on one day alone, followed by another 21,000 a few days later. Conservationists have been monitoring adult females and their nests before, during, and after the birth of the hatchlings. Researchers are studying the conditions for mass hatchlings to help improve management and protection of this endangered species. <laughs> Chapel of Atlantis This arched, gothic dome of a former church still pokes its head out above the water level in this drowned city called Petrolandia. The Chapel of Atlantis is all because of the unavoidable and inevitable opening of a water reservoir to support the state's largest hydroelectric dam. So on any given day, this place looks like the mythical sunken city in a fantasy movie. But it's all too real. It was done on purpose. In 1987, the old city was flooded for the construction of the power plant. And after the flood, only the top of the Church of the Sacred Heart of Jesus was visible. So citizens of Petrolandia were forced to move away from the town they know. And now, this place is known as the Brazilian Atlantis. And you can kayak right inside and around this modern ruin. The archways that stand clear of the water tell the story of the strangely haunting relic. The hydroelectric plant that spurred on the flooding still hums along, using the waters of the man-made reservoir to make power for millions of Brazilians. And this church remains. Not even the promise of clean, futuristic energy can erase the traces of this town completely. During the dry season, the lake partly dries out and some of the temple's remaining structures can be seen. But Petrolandia is no more. <laughs> Sunken Trail Who's up for some underwater hiking? This really happened at the Rio de Prata Ecological Park in Bonito Municipality of Brazil. That's a lot of water. When it rains a lot here, and it does rain a lot here, the Rio da Prata River runs slower, causing its natural damming, thus increasing the water level on this hiking trail to extreme levels, as you can see. An underwater forest you can wander through may sound like something out of a storybook, but here, it's a watery reality. You better like to swim if you like hiking here, plus the waters remain crystal clear. A high concentration of minerals and calcium carbonates help to keep the water clear, allowing for a complete view of the beautiful natural reserve. Snorkelers captured this amazing footage of the trail. Unsurprisingly, the video quickly became a hit on social media, with many travelers immediately adding this park to their bucket lists. This underwater haven is very much a rare phenomenon, but it makes an appearance on occasion. The forest is usually very much above water, but heavy rainfall means that the rivers here overflow into the forests surrounding their banks. The water level will rise up to 12 feet during a typical flood, completely submerging the path underwater for days. Abandoned Viaduct It sticks out like a sore thumb from the jungle and then disappears abruptly. What's up with that? But there it is. Right in the middle of a forest in the southern state of Sao Paulo is this large, yet entirely random, abandoned jungle highway called Viaduct Petrobras. The segment was supposed to connect Rio de Janeiro to Sao Paulo, but it never got finished. The viaduct sits 131 feet above the jungle. It was part of the transcoastal highway that was built in the 1950s. The highway eventually became Brazil's longest highway as it stretches for almost 3,000 miles from north to south. So, when the government first thought of building a road over these jungle mountains, executing the plan proved to be too challenging. Building a viaduct over any jungle can't be easy. Construction pushed through despite hostile conditions in the area that had workers battling heat, insects, and the challenge posed by large ancient trees was too much. Plus, an economic crisis hit Brazil right in the middle of the viaduct's construction. So, the project was abandoned. The people in power realized that this will be just as difficult. 
The viaduct Petrobras is an abandoned masterpiece of concrete in the middle of the rainforest, a mysterious huge structure growing up out of the jungle and then just disappearing. <sighs> Skyscraper Cemetery Cemeteries around the world hold the remains of around 100 billion dead people at this very moment, all of which are currently buried or otherwise stored somewhere on this planet right now. No wonder we're running out of space for final resting grounds in some areas. So a skyscraper cemetery kind of makes perfect sense. Between tall buildings and a lush forest in Santos, Brazil, is the tallest vertical cemetery in the world, a distinction celebrated in the Guinness Book of World Records. Inside, it's just rows and rows, floor after floor of memorial space. There are crypts, rooms to hold services, a crematorium, and a mausoleum for families who want to preserve their legacy in a more personal and private way. There's even a tropical garden complete with a waterfall and a small rooftop cafe to take in the view. Not too shabby. While few regular cemeteries can be considered tourist attractions in their own right, this vertical graveyard is actually one of the most visited landmarks here and is acknowledged as such by the local tourism board. People from all over the world come to Santos to see this fancy necropolis, and people pay big money for these tombs with a view. Founded in 1983, the 14-floor cemetery looks more like an apartment building than a home for the newly dead. The Triple Frontier With diverse cuisine, engineering marvels, the world's most beautiful waterfalls, historical ruins, natural sanctuaries, shopping wonderlands, and even an animatronic dinosaur park, the Triple Frontier is the destination for those who want to experience three countries and countless attractions in one trip. Where the Agazu and Piranha rivers converge sits the Triple Frontier, the tri-border multicultural hub of South America. The Triple Frontier is a tri-border area along the junction of Argentina, Brazil, and Paraguay. The population in the Triple Frontier is concentrated in three border cities. Altogether, the population of the Triple Frontier adds up to about 950,000 people. At the convergence of the borders, each of the three bordering countries has erected an obelisk, painted in the national colors of the country in which it's located. All three countries can be seen from the same spot. The Triple Frontier is an important tourist area. The Triple Frontier is considered Latin America's main border. Thousands of people travel to and from Argentina, Paraguay, and Brazil every day, where Spanish, Portuguese, or a mix of the two can be heard in any one of the cities that make up the border. <laughs> Radioactive Beach Aria Preta Beach in Brazil is famous not because it's an ideal tourist destination, but with radiation nearly 400 times higher than normal standards. It certainly doesn't stop people from enjoying it like any other beach. It does very much have enough gamma radiation to pose a serious danger to tourists. Brazil is a country that's always famous for its blue sea and white sand, along with a coastline stretching hundreds of miles that's attracted tourists from all over the world. Yet there's no beach quite like this. The sand in this area, especially the black sand, contains a lot of monozite, a phosphate-rich mineral, and a number of rare earth elements, including uranium and thorium. The black sand region was first noticed in 1880. Scientists think the ocean waves are constantly pounding the coastal mountains, rich in this mineral, and some radioactive compounds have washed ashore as black sand. As a result, to this day, thousands of tourists still flock to these particular beaches hoping to heal themselves by lying or even covering themselves with radioactive sand, ignoring the danger of prolonged exposure to radiation. Many people in Brazil still believe that exposure to sand is actually good for their health. <laughs> Giant Lily Pads Victoria Amazonica is the largest member of the water lily family, and for good reason. It's gigantic. This giant water lily has extremely large, round leaves with upturned rims, which can measure up to almost 10 feet in diameter. Supported by a ribbed undersurface and anchored to a submerged stalk, these enormous leaves float on the surface of bodies of water here in the Amazon basin. It was officially known to science as Victoria Regia, the name these giant lily pads were given by an English botanist in 1837. The name was chosen to honor Britain's new monarch Queen Victoria, who took the throne that same year. Certainly, this plant impressed Her Royal Highness. In addition to their great size, these giant water lilies are remarkable for the flowers they produce, which last for just 48 hours and only emerge at night.
The stalks of these plants can grow up to 26 feet and embed themselves in the mud at the bottom of lakes or rivers. The waxy upper surface of the leaf has water-repellent properties, while the underside is protected from plant-eating fish by a series of sharp spines. Their preferred habitat is provided by the lakes of South America's rainforest, shallow bodies of water, or slow-moving rivers. Giant Ant Hill Check out this sophisticated underground ant city once populated by millions of insects. It recently was discovered and documented by a team of scientists, and now the world can see just how amazing ants are. They built this ant metropolis, the now abandoned ant city features vast subterranean highways, paths and gardens, all of which was found buried beneath the earth. It's thought to have housed one of the biggest ant colonies in the world, the ant equivalent of the Great Wall of China. The community of ants, described as a superorganism because of the way they coordinated themselves, carried out the Herculean task of building their giant home. Each insect would have repeatedly carried loads of earth, weighing more times more than the worker, a distance of what would be just over a half mile in human terms. Researchers poured 10 tons of concrete into holes on the surface, which served as air conditioning ducts for the ants to expose the tunnels by solidifying the space. It took 10 days to pour the material down the labyrinth of channels, which covered an area of 500 square feet and extended to 26 feet below the surface. In total, they excavated around 40 tons of soil to expose the mega ant labyrinth. Brazil is no longer such a mystery with informative videos like these, but did you imagine this amazing country had even more? Neither did we, but we're glad we made the journey through Brazil together.